Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the City Council meeting. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. We'll have a moment of silence before we start the meeting, please. Thank you. I'll call the meeting to order. Got uh, approval. Of the minutes for October the 2nd, 2017 meeting. Any corrections, additions? I motion to approve. Thank you, Ann. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Against? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. October financial report. Questions? Make a motion we accept the financial Thank report for two thousand. Hey, David. Thank you, Dad. All in favor? Against? Abstentions? Motion approved. Thank you. Takes us to mayor's open remarks. I don't have anything special tonight for for the open remarks. We'll uh, open the floor for public comment. Anybody want to come forward for public comment? Elizabeth. Mayor Joe, City Council. I'm Elizabeth Kirkwood, 1515 Dawkins Road, LaGrange, Kentucky. I'd like to talk about the Green Space Survey with my focus, of course, on the skate park. The community survey is on the whole very well done. It is, uh, the pictures are good. It, it explains everything to the people. The one setback that I see is uh, that the price, and I know we can't be exact about anything at this stage of the game but the price the bottom line on a lot of these things is is influencing people how people judge this survey um, they are either very for it because the price looks low or they are against it because the price looks high the skate park is down for two hundred and fifteen thousand dollars and that includes one hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of of concrete equipment so people just automatically go i don't want to do the skate park because something else is twenty thousand and that's 215. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and just read this, though. All projects should be presented on an even playing field. Some of the projects being considered have a low price as they are only partially completed at the price listed. The skate park is at the other end of the spectrum. It is the highest listed item because $150,000 in new equipment is included. When doing the survey, I had feedback from some people that they would rank projects by price only, and the skate park will be last would be the last to be recommended. The projects that had twenty thousand price tags for roof only were seen as worth it. The skate park for two hundred and fifteen thousand was not. We have ramps. I would like to see the ramps that are in storage to evaluate their usability. I have checked with seasoned skaters, skate park groups, t the Tony Hawk Foundation, etc., and it is a toss up as to the preference for steel or concrete ramps. There are pros and cons to both. Accidents in skate parks are lower than in other sports per the Skate Park Association of the United States, SPALSA, and it finds statistically that a higher percentage of injuries occur in hockey, football, basketball, soccer, baseball, and volleyball per number of participants. I am inquiring into grants and funding for the skate park, and LaGrange meets basic requirements for consideration with the Tony Hawk Foundation and groups that match funds and don't laugh, but I'm also going to ask Ellen DeGeneres. My passion for this skate park, in part, comes from being a nurse caring for young people in trouble and in the fact that we are building more prisons and jails than activities for preteens, teens, and young adults. We either keep them busy in a healthy way or abandon them to the bad habits of our society, which will help fill up these new prisons. <coughs> When I lived in a small town in Sonoma County, I sent my 10-year-old daughter Sarah to the San Francisco Boys and Girls Club summer, club summer Camp in Mendocino to have fun, but also to meet people outside our little world. When I got back home from dropping her off, I passed two of her girlfriends, ages 10 and 13. They had makeup on, they were smoking, and talking to two grown men in a car. My response was, heck no and went out and got something to occupy Sarah when she got home in two weeks. I found a wonderful, wise, gentle horse named Wendy. Sarah was busy for years with Wendy and developed into a productive, healthy adult. It's easy to shape toddlers and young children. The most critical time for a kid is preteen, teen, and young adult. We need a skate park and all the healthy socializing that goes with it. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. Anyone else? When coming forward, we'll go to uh, the grain utility reports. I'll have that in your packet. Uh, I think uh, Ted Chisholm sent that out Thursday morning. Also, if you have any questions, representative of LaGrange Utilities is in the audience. So, Um, I would just like to uh, talk with, yes, thank you. It's my understanding that we, uh, that you did get the I-71 interceptor uh, yes. approved, right? Okay, it's, I just wanted is, to confirm is, that and let everyone know that that is It is on my desk at this time. Done. It okay. took us two years. Thank you. But awesome job. we finally job. got it that we can lay. They actually wrote it that we can, we don't have to lay it in where the other line is right now. We can actually lay parallel, which will probably, that we can leave the other old line where it's at. So if we ever have to come back and need more capacity, we could actually have two lines there instead of one in the interstate. And we probably would never have to be back here in your lifetime or mine either one. And that has saved the city a yes, lot of money. Probably, I appreciate that. That's probably going to end up saving the rate payers probably a million plus dollars. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Any more questions while I'm up here? It's a great job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I know, but, I know, Stephanie, you, I'll just answer yours before you ask. We're planning, we did work on a control panel at Madison Street last Friday. We think we've got all the glitches worked out of it, so that project should finish up this month also. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. Ted. Thank you. That yes, just sir. that wasn't done overnight. You need to maybe <clears throat> about, I, about how long did that's what it I was take just us? Tell, that's what I said. It took us two years to get yeah, this. Yeah. And we went before we've went before everybody and got actually, rejected a couple times and Yes, we got yeah. rejected and we've reapplied and we built a appeal book and 
actually that I will have to compliment their county judge because he has helped me on this last little process to get this. Yes. Thanks. Thank you, Ted. Financial still look good off, so appreciate it. Grange Main Street report, Karen, please. Good evening. Um, you have your reports, um, so you can ask me anything that you like. The, one of the things I need tonight is for the approval for the mayor to be able to sign our annual letter of commitment. It's there on the left side or right side of your packet. What has, it's our, just our normal agreement that we would still work together for the next year. And while you're looking over that, I'd like to thank Public Works if you have not seen them, all of the banners are up. This, um, if you're coming up 53, you'll get to see them also. So thank you all very much for that and Public Works for taking care of that. Thank you. Um, our rail fan numbers continue to be very fun and impressive. We have had up to this point 11.4 million um, viewers minutes viewing which averages just right at 21 years so um, <laughs> since August we've had 21 years worth of viewing and I know that in the last three weeks we have had three people I know for sure that have come by into town for that reason and have spent the day so that's that's paying off I had a three-page handwritten letter which is very unusual to, get, to receive. Anymore, yes. And uh, from a gentleman in Bristol, Tennessee. Well, actually, and they were even here. They came to visit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I met them. Yes. When they came in, I met them downtown on Courthouse Lawn and just agreed them to the city, and they were very impressed. And mm -hmm. he said he had been a real fan since he was a lad. And he, you know, I'm sure, did you meet him or did you meet him? I didn't him? get to meet him. I got to meet his family. The family, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was exciting, too. It was exciting. For them to come in just mm -hmm. because of the rail fan cam mm -hmm. they found Lagrange. So, And that's not the only one that happens, you know. It is. Um, also, just as a reminder, this Saturday and Sunday, the Arts on City Place will be taking place at City Place. And then we also have the 25th of November, it's hard to believe, it's Shop Small Saturday, and you will see an invitation in your packet for that. And then also, Light Up LaGrange is here, um, just less than a month away now. So we invite you for that on December 2nd, 3 to 9. Uh, and we will have the lighting ceremony at 6.30. So. Mayor, if we can make sure and put you down on your schedule for that, to throw that switch. Have there been any changes with Light Up LaGrange this year? Is it going to be on the end side of town again, or is it going to come back up this way a little more? Last year we did not do the Polar Express, mm -hmm. so that was, and it is actually going to be all over town. We have, um, so far, we have Southeast Christians going to be showing short movies all day from three to six. At City Place, we'll have candy cane making again. From four to six at the um, community center, we'll have cookie decorating. Choirs at second and at Walnut. <clears throat> and then Santa and we'll be in from 6.30 to nine on the courthouse lawn. So. We will literally be going from one end to the other. Oh, and also Metro United Way is going to have a 5K run that day. They'll start off at 2.30, start there at City Place, go down to the health department, come back up. Mm -hmm. 
Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Karen. I'd like to go ahead and make a motion for the mayor to have uh, consent to sign the accredited program annual letter of commitment. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. We'll have the uh, community green space update. Nancy? Good evening. I have my eldest helper tonight. <laughs> Just gauge. I'm Nancy Griffin. For those of you who don't know me, I work in the city of LaGrange. I'm not a citizen of LaGrange. I'm a citizen of the county. Um, one of my jobs with the city of LaGrange is uh, community development projects. The mayor asked me about a year, year and a half ago, to do some work with the future community green space. So my purpose for being up here tonight is to give everyone an update on that. Um, first of all, City Council, the presentation you have is not easy to read, and I just figured that out. So we're going to do a plan B, which I can do, don't worry. I am prepared. Let me get all my stuff out of here. What we've basically got right now is just an update on each of the different projects that have come forward for discussion. There are no decisions being made tonight. There are no voting decisions going on tonight. We are merely in the discovery process of the project. Right now our goal is to speak with residents, um, interested parties, community leaders, to see what types of things they want to see at the community green space. Most of that is not new to you. We announced that a couple months ago. Um, what will be new to you tonight is press release. The press release has the dates for your opportunities to come by and fill out surveys. Would you pass those out? Across here. Um, we also, there, the dates that, are, that will be on that press release are the dates where someone will be available to um, be there with you to answer questions when you look at the survey, fill it out, etc., and so on. You can also come by the office anytime you want and fill out a survey as long as the office is open. And as well, Karen um, at Main Street has graciously offered to um, pass out surveys at her office as well. So if you see the dates on here and are not able to come and give your opinion, you can always call and give me your opinion. You can uh, let Karen know or you can fill out a form by coming by the office. Hopefully he left me a press release so I can review it. Okay. All right, real quick. If you want to take a look about halfway down, well, actually, it's a little bit more towards the bottom. Survey dates and locations, and it goes on into the second page. And thank you, by the way. We have several city council members that have volunteered to take this task off my plate. I'm very excited. <laughs> so on Tuesday, November the 14th, and Friday, November the 17th, from 11.30 to 1.30 and 5.30 to 7.30, please go to Big R and Shannon's Barbecue. You can talk to Shannon. She will have the surveys there that day. And we are going to go over the information in just a second. On Saturday, December the 2nd, which is Light Up LaGrange, Debbie Pollard is going to hang out at the Main Street Welcome Center, and she'll be available should you want to go by there and fill out a survey. On Tuesday, December the 5th, the library is having their open house, and Ann Zimlick will be there from 5.30 to 7.30 if you want to go by there and fill out a survey. And again, just as a reminder, you can always come by the office or go by Main Street. Okay. This is really not anything you particularly need to see. You already know it. But just to let you know, this is one of the visual aids that we're using in our presentations. This is the, the newer version of the map. It basically has the area highlighted that is defined as the community green space. So we'll have that set up at the presentations. The surveys, um, you probably can't see them because they're too small. They look like this. They're very simple. You just label it in the order you like, and you sign your name and tell me if you're over 18 or under 18. Turn it back into me or whoever happens to be the person that is taking the survey on that day. All right, real quick. We don't have a whole lot of time, so we're not going to do all of these. 
in detail. We'll do some. We'll do a little bit on each page. Nancy, do you yes. mind delay that survey on there so that sure. the council and the public can see it before Absolutely. we move past it? It's available in full color if you want it. I just try to save money on printing. It's pretty basic. Skate park, splash pad, playground, pavilion, amphitheater, and other. The reason for other is because this is all about your input. So if there is something else you want to see in that area, this would be where you would specify that. At the bottom, you have your name and your contact or your email, and then your age. Questions on that? Pretty easy. I try to keep it simple. Just a couple quick highlights, which again are, are repeats. You've, ooh, let's see how we do this to make it so you can see it. I guess we'll have to do it like that. The picture just shows the space. Just, oh, that's too advanced for me. Oh, look at there. Can you all see that okay? The picture, it's okay if you don't see the picture right now. Those are just quick highlights. The area is just under four acres. It is a city owned space. It is, um, the, what we're doing again is just uh, seeking input for community growth, gathering and development. We're looking for what we can put in that space. This particular project will extend the natural boundary of the city's business district by one block. That's important because if you remember when we added the railroad viewing platform, we, and also uh, Tom Clemens opened up his ale house, we extended our business area by one block that way. So I'm trying to each, every now and then, just go a little bit further out, a little bit further down, bringing all the business in. So this is just basically the west end versus the east end. Seeking community input for space utilization. That's just the highlights. <clears throat> a couple of things you want to remember when you're looking at the survey. Again, I will not go into all of this because we have so much to talk about tonight. You can tell I'm not a teacher. They probably could do this. Stephanie, you could do this in a heartbeat. Yeah, <laughs> okay, so um, the survey is for gathering interest and information. It's not a financial or final commitment to a specific project. Oh, Faith's going to fix it for me. Oh, now it's sideways. Is that okay? Maybe, she says. It's okay, I'll keep talking. Um, basically, what's going to happen is the data that we gather in the next two months is going to be presented to the park board, to city council and to the vision committee, and then they will begin to make decisions about how to move forward with this particular program. All of these projects are gonna involve some type of fundraising, sponsorships, and grants. Nothing's free out there. So just as a head up, heads up, that is a part of this program. Um, the, uh, the project quotes and estimates that are in this actual presentation are estimates only, and that's because we only had a certain amount of time to get this information out. And we've talked with two or three different cities about their projects, and we've checked with two or three different, well, probably more like five or six different projects online to get just sort of a cost estimate. But the estimates that you see are truly estimates, okay? This is really more about what you're interested in seeing rather than what the exact cost is going to be. It was gathered through general conversation with vendors, other cities, area community leaders, online projects, things like that. It's provided for general guidance and directional discussion only. Just remember, those quotes will change, okay? I keep saying that because I want to make sure we understand that. Basically, the process for this survey, I've kind of already explained that to you. Anyone 11 and up can participate in the sur survey. Just make sure you put your age on the survey. They can be done however you want. So far, we've just done paper, but we also have an online opportunity if we need it. And then we have a chip and storyboard where you look at the storyboards and put your chips in the particular slots that you're the most interested in, and then we count those up. Um, you don't have to vote for only one option. It's acceptable for vote for projects in the order of preference. This is the one you like the best. This is the one you like the second, so on and so, and so forth, okay? The participants do need to provide a name and a contact number or email, and that has a lot to do with later on when we are gathering the research information and putting it into things like grants. We have to be able to prove that we talk with actual people. We're not going to call and bug people, but we do have to show that we have actual contact information. Uh, any questions, you can contact me or Ann Zimlick. 
We've both been pretty involved in this, so either one of us can pretty well pull that off. Now this, you've already seen the press release on this. This is just, oh, this is actually changed. So you know what? We're gonna take this one off, because we have more. The press release you already have tells you the dates for the surveys. Now we're gonna take a quick look at the five projects that are being discussed in no particular order. Although in the press release, I did put them in alphabetical order. Oh look, Faith, now it's gotta go the other way. I'm just gonna slide it. Splash pad. This is, the, this, this, the picture sample came from a, a vendor called Vortex. The uh, project for the splash pad is handicapped accessible, 16 pounds, half, half of them above ground, water usage 3 million gallons a year, has directional water jets, water jelly, aquiline flower, sidewinder, launch pad, and water tunnel. These, these estimates are based on the numbers we turned in for the Land Water Conservation Fund last year. This is probably the most complete storyboard we have because Bill Lamblin has been so gracious to work on this that it was very easy to get the information. Community skate park. This one, this particular one, is from American Ramp Company, which is the current the company that used that built our last one. This is a concrete ramp versus a metal ramp. Um, in the end, it's up to whatever you all decide, concrete ramp or otherwise. The reason the concrete one is here is because I had pretty solid information from other state, other cities about their investment in their concrete skate park and their reasons for why they chose that. I will tell you, this estimate is pretty close on to a couple of neighboring towns that um, had skate parks put in new. This is new. This is not the same one we have, which is what Ms. Kirkwood was talking about. She was interested in getting information on what to do if we recycle the old one. I do not have that information available. If that's something you all want me to move forward on, you just let me know. I'm going with straight up new stuff for now for sake of discussion. Feel free to come by and talk with me about why. I don't mind at all. So your estimated project cost is down there. You've got 150 for the actual product, 5,000 for your design work, which I think rolls into the actual 150,000 if you move forward. 15,000 on the contract work, 25,000 is gonna be the things we haven't remembered to, to add leveling, fencing, landscape benches, things like that. Playground. This one came, I'll tell you why this one came to, the, came to the table for conversation. We became aware that uh, the YMCA, the Community Center YMCA has, I think, about 30 kids. I'd have to get an exact quote on that. They have about 30 kids every day that are there in the summer and after school, and they have nowhere to play. If you ever come by City Hall, you'll see them playing in the green spot out front. And so that's how this conversation came up. Different people were talking about the possibility of having a playground near. And so that's where this came from. This is called the Game Town Scrambler. There is a grant available for this one. It's a 50-50 match from the actual product company themselves. Specs, it's designed for five to 12 years. There's your zone space. Uh, your fall height's about eight. Number of children, 25 to 30. It takes about 14 tons of rubber mulch. It's amazing how you can figure those things out, but I did, I figured it out. Estimated project costs, we're looking at 197 on equipment, 6,700 on mulch, 1,900 on the frame that goes around the mulch. Things like labor, we just don't know because the things that our public works department can do, we will by all means ask them if they are able. That will be up to Corey. Um, and then there will also be things that we have to bring in engineers and things like that for. Okay, this particular pavilion is an example from Icon Shelter System. Um, I have talked with two other towns about their farmers markets and the prices range from about 60,000 to about 200,000. This particular one was found online through Icon Shelter System, which was some information given to me by the county. This is about 100 by 40, which is kind of about what we had talked about when we visited some of the other farmers markets. Two restaurants, electric and storage area is not included in the price because I don't know what that will cost. Um, and the shelter structure itself is about 185. You want to add things like brick columns, restroom, you know, you want it to look classy, it's a, a pavilion, but we don't have pricing available for that. We're down to the last one or two. Community amphitheater was a discussion that came up as a place for some downtown concerts and we can maybe have income, we could rent this out, which was one of the reasons that there was some interest expressed in this. This particular one is also from Icon Shelter. 
just happens to be one that looks like it'll fit in the space. Um, again, we're open to whatever people are interested in. I just needed to give you an idea. So this is a band shell hexagon shelter, um, and we're looking at about 22, and that is for the structure only. Okay, and if you notice that the community green space, if you haven't had a chance to walk it, you are welcome to walk it as long as it's mowed. Um, there is a natural incline towards the back. This is very ideal for an amphitheater. And then just kind of as a reminder, those are the five main things that have been discussed. But again, this is a discussion that is open to anyone or about anything. There's some other pictures of other types of playgrounds and pavilions. It's, just, it's really just up to you. This is the time where you tell us what you want. So that is basically the information that you will get when you come by to fill out your survey. You'll have an opportunity to look through all that and ask questions. And then you just fill out your survey. And then we'll have an idea of what we can present to the Vision kid, uh, Committee, City Council, Community Leaders, and et cetera, to uh, move forward. Can I answer any questions? I have a question. Yes, sir. On your diagram of the green space here, right, right there, uh -huh. um, Third Street would connect all three of those properties. Do you know, and I don't know, do you know whether Third Street was officially closed and has that been retained by the city or divided off to property owners? I'm going to assume someone else knows that better than me. My understanding is that Third Street was closed as part of the railway. Am I right? And with that closing, though, I guess the second part of that question was, was all that land retained by the city even though it was closed? Because that's a lot of land, and it connects those parcels, if that's true. The space that would have gone down the mill. Right. I, I, I'm happy to go look. That's all I can really honestly answer you. It might even be that Mr. Rawlings has some of that. Well, and, and that's what we need to find out. We need to find out how much has been retained by the city. I'm, I'm going to assume for the moment that... It's in Third Street, right? This right. It doesn't exist anymore, but there's a patch of concrete at the railroad. And then going yes, down. yes. And... I understand I know what you're talking. I think, you know, obviously the best thing is if the city closed it but retained its entirety. If not, we need to find out how that actually lays out. Good advice. Thank you. I hadn't even gotten that far in thoughts. Other questions? Nancy, the information you presented tonight, is it available online? Is there a website? It's not available online yet, but it can be. Um, I emailed a few copies out last week, and I'm going to send you the hard copy tomorrow because you can't read it. Okay. So you just and let me know what you want. I'm happy to send it to you. Thank it's you. It's community input. If you want to go talk with people, you can. Uh, Russ Morris printed up the presentation. He, I mean, you can do whatever you want with it. But their web, a website could be created. Yeah, for we could it. do like a Facebook page add-on if we needed to for the green space under our website. And well, then, Faith would tell me for sure, but I would assume we could. Even a Facebook page, I know we could do. And then on the survey, is there a place for people's addresses? Either a contact um, email or a contact phone number. Is there, is there a reason we can't have addresses on there, or is this something you we can, can put on there? I can put on the survey whatever you want. My reason for doing that is that in the past, that was the only information that was required on other surveys. Um, my concern was I figured that a lot of people would not want to give out all of their identification. That's why I just picked two easy ones. And this isn't open to only city residents because it's utilized by a lot of people in the county, too. So it's really open to anyone to, for input. Okay, but we could put addresses on there if we Sure. Okay, mm -hmm. that'd be great. Thank you. Other questions? All right. Thank you. Come by and see me if you have any more. Thank you, Nancy. Mm -hmm. Can you put the agenda back on the table? Yeah. <laughs> I can figure out where it is. Here it is, right here. It's okay. You can go sit down. Oh, yeah, but no. <laughs> Faith, you want to come turn around? <laughs> She's got my back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Steve, we're ready for second reading in public hearing ordinance 14 2017, please. Thank you, Mayor. Commonwealth of Kentucky, City of LaGrange, Ordinance Number 14, 2017, an ordinance amending Ordinance 13, 2017, adopting the City of LaGrange, Kentucky annual budget for the fiscal year July 1, 2017 through June 30, 2018, by estimating funds for operations of city government. 
whereas an annual budget proposal and message has been prepared and delivered to the City Council of LaGrange, Kentucky, and whereas the City Council has reviewed such budget proposal and accepted same as presented, now therefore be it ordained by the City of LaGrange, Kentucky as follows. Section 1. The annual budget for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2017 and ending June 30, 2018 is hereby adopted as follows. Revenues. Ad valorem, 1,235,000. Motor vehicle, 130,000. Delinquent property tax, 50,000. Franchise tax, 300,000. Omitted tangibles, 7,000. Business licenses, 359,447.83. Garbage commission, 380,000. 10% insurance premium tax, 1,540,000. Miscellaneous income, 50,000. Penalties, 10,000. Interest income, 2,000. Utility tax, 55,000. Mine and mineral, 7,000. Received CLEP, uh, 56,000, CLEF portion retirement, 17,640, House Bill 413, 13,000, discounts, a uh, credit of 20,000, encroachment fees, 40,000, bank share, 60,000, community center, 4,000, federal overtime, 6,000, compensation tax, $1,749,030, ABC license fees, 15,000, Litter abatement grant, 4,000. Firm reserve account for new hire public works, 50,000. Grand total, 6,084,117.83. Expenses, administration, 1,028,482.20. Special appropriations, 2,538,230.25. Police, 1,540,000. 734 and 67 cents. Public works, 976,670 and 71 cents. Grand total, 6,084,117 and 83 cents. Section two, introduced, seconded, and adopted at a duly convened meeting of the governing body held on September 6, 2017, after first reading held on October 2, 2017, signed by the mayor of the city of LaGrange, attested by the city clerk, filed and indexed as provided by law. This ordinance shall take effect upon its passage, approval and publication according to law, and shall continue until amended or until June 30, 2018, whichever should first occur. Thank you, Steve. We have a motion on the uh, ordinance 14, 2017. Motion to accept. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. We need a motion to go into public hearing. Motion for public hearing. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? We're now in public hearing. Anybody in public have a comment on this ordinance? No one coming forward. Motion to go out of public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Uh, discussion by the council? Stephanie, roll call. Jason? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Shannon? Yes. Trey? Yes. Ann? Yes. Debbie? Yes. Tad? Yes. Seven to zero. Motion carries, thank you. Steve, we ready for number 10, second reading public hearing order 15 2017? Yes, Mayor. Uh, City of LaGrange, Kentucky, Ordinance Number 15, Series 2015. An ordinance proposing to annex certain unincorporated territories within the County of Oldham. Kentucky and contiguous to the present boundary lines of the city of LaGrange, Kentucky, and defining by meets and bounds the territory proposed to be annexed. Whereas Kentucky Revised Statute 81A.410 authorizes the delegates, city legislative, excuse me, authorize 
annexes and delegates city legislative bodies the authority to annex territories and to enact ordinances stating its intent to annex territory. And whereas Kentucky Revised Statute 81A.420 provides the manner in which said annexation should be accomplished, and whereas Kentucky Revised Statute 81A.425 provides for timely notice to all affected landowners, and whereas the property herein described is adjacent to and or contiguous to the city's boundaries and does not include any ter territory that is already within the jurisdiction of another incorporated city's boundaries and is wholly within Oldham County, and whereas the property herein described is not part of an agricultural district formed pursuant to KRS 262.85010, and whereas the property herein described is suitable for development without unreasonable delay because of population density, commercial, industrial, or governmental use of land or subdivision of land, and whereas it is the intention of the City Council to annex the herein identified territory, now therefore be it enacted and ordained by the City of LaGrange, Kentucky, Section 1 that the City Council of LaGrange declares that it is desirable to annex the within described territory intends to annex and hereby proposes to annex to its present boundaries and includes the same within the territorial limits and include the same within the territorial limits of the City of LaGrange, Oldham County, Kentucky. The following described unincorporated land and area located in the County of Oldham, Commonwealth of Kentucky, to wit, See attached Exhibit A, Legal Description B, Platt. Section 2. The City Council of the City of LaGrange finds that the aforementioned territory is by reason of population density, commercial, industrial, institutional, or governmental use of land or subdivision of land is urban in character or suitable for development for urban purposes without unreasonable delay. Section 3, pursuant to KRS 81A.425, notice shall be sent by first class mail to all property owners of the proposed annexed land no later than 14 days prior to the meeting upon which this ordinance shall receive its second reading. The city clerk shall certify the list of property owners to whom the notice was sent and the certified list shall be made a part of the official record of the meeting upon which this ordinance receives its second reading. Section 4. This ordinance shall be signed by the mayor and attested to by the city clerk after its second reading and recorded by publication pursuant to KRS Chapter 424. If within 60 days of publication there has been no petition presented to the county clerk opposing this proposed annexation signed by 50% of the resident voters or owners of real property within the limits of the territory proposed to be annexed, the City Council may pass an ordinance thereby annexing the aforementioned property into the corporate limits of the City of LaGrange. Section 5, that this ordinance shall take effect and be in full force when enacted and ordained, published and recorded according to law. First reading, October 2, 2017, Second reading, November 6, 2017. Thank you, Steve. We have a motion on ordinance 15, No motion. You need to mo you need a motion to go into public hearing, or mo motion to bring it to the floor. We only you, we usually get a motion to and a second to take it to the floor for public hearing. Second, second, and then the motions for public, public hearing. hearing. Right, true. This allows for this allows for the matter to come before the the public and the council for discussion if those procedures are followed. Okay. 
No motion. Big day for no motion. Is that it? Let's move to the roll. Got uh, introduction, first reading, order in 16-2017. Ted, can you introduce that one? Yes, sir. I'd like to introduce ordinance number 16, 2017, modifying 50.03 and 50.06 concerning LaGrange Utility Commission. Thank you. Ordinance number 16, series 2017, City of LaGrange, Kentucky, modifying sections 50.03 and 50.06 concerning LaGrange Utility Commission whereas the City Council of the City of LaGrange has the authority pursuant to statute to enact ordinances relating to the city, and whereas it is desirable that specific terms concerning compensation of commissioners and reports to City Council be amended, therefore be it enacted and ordained that sections 50.03 and 50.06 of the Code of Ordinances be modified as follows. Section 50.03, Compensation. The Utility Commission shall determine the compensation to be paid to its members not exceeding an annual salary of $3,600 per commissioner per annum, except that each commissioner who completes during a calendar year a minimum of six instructional hours year one of water or sewer utility management training approved by the Public Service Commission Division of Water or equivalent municipal utility training may receive an annual salary of not more than $4,800 for year one. Each commissioner who completes during the following calendar year an additional six instructional hours consecutive year two of water or sewer utility management training approved by the Public Service Commission, Division of Water or equivalent municipal utility training may receive an annual salary of not more than $6,000 for year two. Each commissioner who continues to complete during the following calendar year and consecutive years beyond an additional six instructional hours, year three and beyond, of water or sewer utility management training approved by the Public Service Commission Division of Water or equivalent municipal utility training may continue to receive an annual salary of not more than $6,000. The chairman shall receive an additional $60 per month as an expense reimbursement. These amounts shall constitute a cost of operation and maintenance of the water work system, sewer system, and other utilities. The city shall not be liable for the payment of any salary or compensation of any member of the utility commission or for the payment of the salary or compensation or expenses of any person employed by the utility commission and such salaries, compensation, and expenses and any and all liabilities of whatever kind or nature incurred by the Utility Commission or any officer or employee thereof shall be paid solely and only out of the revenue obtained from the Utility Commission from the various utilities owned by the city pursuant to the law and the liability, liability shall be so limited. Section 50.06, Powers and Duties, Parts A, B, C, and D remain the same. Part E, LaGrange Utilities Report, must continue to remain as a line item on the agenda for the regularly scheduled City Council meetings and representation from LaGrange Utilities must attend in person at said meetings. This ordinance shall become effective upon its passage and publication. Thank you, Steve. We'll have a second reading and Public hearing on December the 4th. Need an introduction on uh, Ordinance 172017. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to make an introduction and first reading of Ordinance 17 2017 and Ordinance Modifying Section 98.05 concerning fishing. Thank you, Shannon. Ordinance number 17, series 2017, City of LaGrange, Kentucky, modifying section 98.05 concerning fishing. 
whereas the City Council of the City of LaGrange, Kentucky has the authority pursuant to statute to enact ordinances relating to the city, and whereas it is desirable that specific terms concerning fishing be added to the existing ordinance. Therefore, be it enacted and ordained that Section 98.05 of the Code of Ordinances be modified as follows. Section 98.05, Fishing Policy at Wilburn Park, the Glen, and Eagle Creek Golf Course. One pole per fisherman. Rainbow trout, daily limit five, minimum size limit none. No culling of trout. Culling is holding a trout in a live well, fish basket, or stringer, and later replacing it with another. Largemouth bass, daily limit one, minimum size limit 15 inches. Catfish, daily limit four, minimum size limit none. Bluegill, other sunfish, daily limit 15, minimum size limit none. 15 fish limit per 24 hour period. Fishing is permitted at Wilburn Park, the Glen, and at Eagle Creek Golf Course. However, at the golf course, fishing is only allowed at the front pond adjacent to Highway 53 and the side pond at the golf course adjacent to Lakewood Drive. Fishing is prohibited at all other ponds at the golf course. This ordinance shall become effective upon its passage and publication. Thank you, Steve. Second reading, public hearing, December the 4th. Need an introduction of first reading of Ordinance, ordinance 18 2017, please. I'd like to introduce uh, ordinance for a first reading, ordinance 18-2017, an ordinance amending mayor's compensation. Thank you. Ordinance number 18, series 2017, City of LaGrange, Kentucky, ordinance amending mayor's compensation, whereas the city council of the City of LaGrange, Kentucky has the authority pursuant to statute to enact ordinances relating to the city, and whereas, as of July 1, 2008, the mayor of the city of LaGrange was compensated at the rate of $1,040 per month payable in equal monthly installments for a total compensation of $12,480 per year, and that rate has remained in effect since that date. And whereas it is desirable that specific terms concerning an increase to the mayor's compensation be memorialized. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the City of LaGrange, Kentucky, as follows. As of January 1, 2019, the mayor of the City of LaGrange shall be compensated at the rate of $4,583.33 per month, payable in equal monthly installments, for a total compensation of $55,000 per year. The mayor of the city of LaGrange shall also be eligible for the same benefits package as non-elected public employees of the city of LaGrange. All ordinances in conflict with this ordinance are hereby repealed. This ordinance shall take effect upon its passage, approval, and publication according to law. Thank you, Steve. We'll have a second reading public hearing on December the 4th. Next on agenda is old business. We have any old business come for us? New business. Um, I did just want to say that at the December 4th council meeting, um, we've invited a representative from KLC to come to discuss with the council the pros and cons of the either continuing our city government and its current form, which is mayor council. Um, that's why we're proposing a possible raise for mayor or proposing um, or looking into the um, option of a city manager in a commissioner form of government. I'm not sure if I'm exactly saying that right, but um, she's going to be coming just to give a pre presentation on that, and we can ask questions of her just moving forward to see if that's an option this city would want to take. Anyone else? Yes, um, the next ordinance committee meeting will be um, November 15th at 5.30 at City Hall. Mr. Mayor, I should have brought 
this up maybe as a public comment, but I have a request to put a free little library at the LaGrange Community Center. I believe you guys were advising some of that. You can come down and speak about it if you want to, yes. We didn't, uh, we didn't get all the information to get it on the agenda, but That's fine. I can send that out to the counselor. That's fine. I'll drop this on here and we'll go from there. Got something, yeah. Uh, my name's Randy Gordon. I am a LaGrange resident. I, uh, I live at 102 Franklin Avenue, and um, I'm also a minister at Northeast Christian Church. And uh, this past summer, we ran a summer reading program at five different sites. Two of those happened to be in LaGrange, one at LaGrange Community Center and one at Lee Street Apartments. And as a part of the goal for that program, we wanted to put a free little library, which there's a really small picture of one of those uh, on the board behind you, at all of the sites where we did the reading program. And in LaGrange, uh, we would concentrate that at LaGrange Community Center. And it is exactly what it says. It's, it's a little library, it's free, uh, and it is, it is the ones that we are trying to put up are already constructed. They're made out of maintenance-free materials. We will uh, install them. We will have a steward for every library. It will be listed with um, the Free Little Library uh, International Organization. Anyone has any questions about it? Because LaGrange Community Center is owned by the city of LaGrange, uh, I started jumping through hoops trying to figure out who to ask permission to install such, and I was pointed to you all as, uh, as the people who would make the decision to say yes, you may, or no, you may not. So happy to answer any questions, but that's the brief um, overview. I will mention that uh, I'm city attorney in the city of Kingsley in Jefferson County. And they have a very small park in their city as well. And just a few months ago, they also decided to fund and prepare the Little Free Library, just like you're describing. Mm -hmm. It's really neat. And it's really well used already. Um, it's, it's one of these things that, as you've mentioned, really takes very little effort but properly run is a terrific resource for kids. Right. And I, th I don't get a vote, but I think it's a really neat idea. Thank you very much. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. We have I've, so many children that go there after school. Yes, and that's why we would want to put it there. Those and kids, I know I've seen one there. I know down in Pee Wee Valley there's one that yes. I've seen. And um, uh, yes, I've, and the, I've heard radio shows that talk about them all over the country. So I think they're a great little they're a great idea and a great asset to the community so I, I support it I don't know what we need to do formally but I'm fine with it me too <coughs> this is something that I I'm firmly believe you can do simply by a motion okay. to uh, permit it to occur and then that will obviously be memorialized in your minutes and then can go forward okay well then I'll make a motion that I am in favor of allowing this gentleman to put in a little free public library at the community center. Second. second. Got a motion or second? We can just do that. We don't need a roll call. We can just do this by voice. voice. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. you for the presentation. Make, right. make sure you work with Mr. Rusnick back here to make sure you don't cut through any utilities we'll on your care. way down. All right. Anything else before come before us? Mayor, just so, just for the record to clarify, if you or Mr. Emery could just inform us and anybody watching this by video or who's left or who's in the audience, what the status is on Ordinance 15, 2017 and kind of where we stand, just so everybody's on the same page. Thanks. Yeah, go ahead, Steve. Died for lack of motion. And thank you. Yes. Uh, the, procedurally, what happened was there was lack of a motion to bring the ordinance back for a second reading. This was an ordinance proposing an annexation of certain unincorporated territory within the county into the city. Uh, this had received a first reading at the last meeting and there was written notice sent out to property owners. Uh, again, because of the way the cameras are situated, a number of people got up and left after this died for lack of a motion to bring to the table for a second reading. Uh, because the second reading's actually been made, but no action was taken on it, it can be brought back up again. Uh, however, the way I understand the statute, we would have to send out 
written notice again prior to another reading of this ordinance coming before the, the city council. Thank you, Steve. Anything else come before us? I just wanted to say, I know Karen thanked Corey, but Corey and I um, and Karen have been working on those banners for quite some time now. And um, I didn't drive Corey too crazy, I don't think. <laughs> but I know he's glad they're up and I don't have to bother with me anymore. But I do appreciate it. They look fantastic and they're spread all throughout the city. So thank you. Here, I, th I think there's another gentleman that would like to address the council and mayor. Is that correct? Or no? Got it. Okay. All right. Sure thing. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn then. Elizabeth Kirkwood again. I just realized what you make, how much you get paid for being mayor. And I'm just wondering, it said 2019 is when a decent salary starts. Um, I mean, I don't know how this works, but is there any way that you can get compensation for this next year? I'm, no. I'm just curious. No, the council, that's not in ordinance. It has to be made. You have to make the increase before the May primary and then it doesn't go in effect until the new term. So. <laughs> Thank you anyway. <laughs> I just love this city. That's why I've been doing this for 22 years. Okay. But I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> Got a motion to adjourn. Did we get a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Welcome, my new job.